Okay, now we're in the waiting room. We've got Daniel here from Time on Bard. How are you feeling, Daniel? Yeah, I'm um, excited, looking forward to it. Ready to go meet the Giants? Yeah, certainly am. And so time on bar, you're looking at pitching. What are you pitching to the Giants today? Uh, so I'm just pitching an awareness program, basically. I'm raising $40,000 to um, uh, bring awareness of time bars and the solution that I'm offering to um, the civil and construction contracting community. Beautiful. Fantastic. Daniel, Let's not hold you back. We wish you the best. All right, thank you. Hi, my name's Daniel Morris. I'm the founder and CEO of Time Unbarred uh, from Mount Hawthorne, uh, here to raise $40,000 for an awareness campaign basically in relation to time bars and the devastating consequences that they have on civil and construction contractors. Uh, in exchange, I'm offering a 1 to 1.5% equity uh, in my startup company, which I'll tell you more about in a moment. Uh, it's about three months uh, old. I've got an MVP. Uh, it's ready to take to market. I've had conversations about uh, this particular offering. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of education that still needs to happen in order for people to gain a proper perspective as to what's on offer and the solutions that it provides. Uh, people say to me, oh, so it's debt recovery. No, it's not debt recovery. Also, oh, it's insurance. No, it's not insurance. Uh, you, you know, are there other ways to get people uh, paid for what they've earned? No, because they haven't actually earned it technically under the construction contract, and that's the problem that I'm uh, here to solve. Um, so during the Q&A session, I, I can explain more about um, uh, what time bars actually are um, and how this solution automates, um, or this, this uh, offering automates the solution to that problem. Um, but uh, in 90 seconds, I probably won't be able to get us there. What problem are you solving? Thank yes, thank you. Um, so construction contractors um, and civil contractors operate under static contracts, so they fix the scope, fix the time for delivery and fix the um, price for construction works. Uh, the sites are highly dynamic, things change every hour, people have orders barked at them, cyclones come along and drop water in their deep trenches and they've got to get dewatering crews and they've got to adjust their scopes and they've got to do all sorts of things that the contract doesn't accommodate. Um, so in order to make the contract accommodated, they've got to um, uh, notify. They've got to give notifications and claims and updates, and they've got to um, give notice of cessation of events, and they've got to just bury their um, principle in paperwork, and they've got to do it within very short time limits called time bars. Uh, you miss them, and that's it. Um, you do your work for free, um, and then the principal comes along, claims liquidated damages at the end of the project, says you were late. Of course I was late, I had a ton more work to do um, under a very tight program. You didn't claim your extension of time, you were late, uh, so now you owe me money for the privilege of having you work for me. <laughs> That's the problem. So with someone like the Master Builders Association, etc., that presumably produce industry accepted contracts, have you talked to them about uh, incorporating time and power? Yes, well my biggest advocate at the moment is um, the Civil Contractors Federation um, and they're helping me get the message out um, and they're lending at the street cred and the gravitas that it needs in order to connect with um, with their members. There are other examples. I've got the um, Association of um, Walls and Ceilings Industries. Uh, I'm talking to the plumbers and gas, master plumbers and gas fitters. Um, that, those, those sorts of people, um, obviously PropTech, um, uh, young, young Investors has a cohort of um, construction related uh, professionals and investors, um, they're helping me get the message out. Through Q&As, I've got my first Q&A on the 24th would August you, podcast, etc. Would you see this becoming an uh, industry standard product which uh, every builder should use? Yes, that's, that's what I'm aiming for. So if the upstream contractors are genuine about wanting to keep the information flowing mm -hmm. up the chain of contracts just in the way that the cash is supposed to be flowing down the chain of contracts, uh, then they should have no objection about uh, using this tool to help them achieve that. And what would you estimate is, uh, sorry, what would you estimate would be the loss of income to builders as a result of them missing out on just... Uh, I've, 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 seen, I've seen losses of a million and more for a single this time though. Um, I've seen people become insolvent and I honestly believe that it's the single biggest cause of um, construction related insolvency 
um, not, not only in this country, but around the world, because there's a conversion market. Would you say this would be more applicable to the smaller builders, the ones who uh, not as sophisticated as the ones building commercial buildings, etc.? Uh, well, the, well the, um, the, the main offenders, if I could call them that, are the, um, are the top tiers, your Lano Rawls and CPBs, etc. Um, the, um, the, the bottom tiers, your tradies, um, uh, probably don't have a use for it. It's firmly targeted um, to the mid tier. You have 10 to 500 uh, million annual turnover. Yeah, that was my question. <coughs> Is there a particular scale of builder or, or contract that you're looking at? So that answers my question. Yeah, yeah probably second and third tier yeah. subcontractors. Does it have the effect of whilst providing surety? Does it have the effect of increasing the cost to build? Uh, no, no, it's uh, less than $500 a month. It's on a subscription. Um, that's a that's a line item on a um, middle manager's uh, credit card. You know, um, that most most middle managers are authorised um, to to uh, incur much bigger monthly spends without having to report internally or seek approval. Uh, I'm sorry, but you're talking about a four million dollar value of your company. That's basically the the numbers. Um, what sort of income are you looking for? Uh, over the next couple of years, and I, I, I want, want profitability rather than income. Yeah, certainly. So, um, so, so look, um, uh, I'm expecting that uh, subscribers will be sticky. So, um, so once they start and start to see the benefit and can offload that um, that burden on their administration um, uh, onto an automated service, I'm expecting that they'll just keep um, they'll just keep their subscriptions going. Um, so it, it'll, it'll be exponentially scalable because every, every new sale will accumulate on the ones that I've already achieved. Um, so we should be able to achieve you know, 100, 150, 150 sales in, in the first year, yeah, I think realistically. At $6,000 um, per annum. At, at about $6,000 per annum. And you mentioned that you've been working on it, I think, only for a couple of months. Is that correct? Or um, I, well, I officially launched the um, product um, uh, at the beginning of this year. Um, uh, it's been under development for a few years. Okay, so yeah. development was a few years, not just, yeah, recent. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank, thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.